The iPhone, arguably the most influential product in Apple's history. It's been 15 years since its release in 2007, and during that time, Apple's made over 30 different models, transforming the tech industry and our lives in the process. And if that's something that fascinates you, I recommend checking out Full Sail University's technology degree programs. They're the sponsor of this video and offer a host of tech-focused degrees, including simulation and visualization, user experience, cybersecurity, game development, and information technology. Plus, their computer science program offers unique concentrations in artificial intelligence or mobile development. A unique aspect of Full Sail's tech programs are their ability to flex and adapt as new methods and applications unfold, allowing students to remain relevant and informed throughout their entire academic journey, which is important in a fast-moving industry like tech. This approach has proven to be so effective that Full Sail graduates have gone on to work at companies like Google, NASA, Unity, Epic Games, and more. To find out more about these exciting programs and how to get started, click the first link in the description below, or just head straight to fullsail.edu slash Apple Explained. All right, now let's take a look at previous technology, where the iPhone started, and how it ended up where it is today. Since 2005, there had been rumors that Apple was working on a mobile phone, but nothing was officially confirmed until January 9th, 2007 when Steve Jobs shocked the tech industry by introducing a mobile device unlike anything the world had ever seen. Its display wasn't two and a half inches like the popular Palm Treo, but 29% larger at three and a half, complete with multi-touch technology. There was no physical keyboard, and the only button in sight was its circular home button. This form factor was already revolutionary, but Apple took things even further with software. The iPhone ran a version of Mac OS X optimized for touch. For the first time, users could flick through their contacts, tap to make a call, and enjoy visual voicemail, which let users choose which voicemail they wanted to hear instead of being forced to listen to all of them in order. It was also the first mainstream smartphone with a full software keyboard, which appeared when you needed it and disappeared when you didn't. It was also optimized with predictive typing, which made certain keys selection area larger based on what you typed previously. iPhone also featured full website access, except for those built with Flash. This was a big deal since other smartphones only displayed certain parts of websites. But one of iPhone's most anticipated features was the iPod, which let users flick through cover flow, rate albums with a tap, and change the volume by dragging their finger. It could also play videos in widescreen format without letterboxing, the first for an Apple device. And its built-in speaker made casual listening more enjoyable since headphones were no longer necessary. Everyone was shocked by the original iPhone's capabilities, as Apple took a radically different approach to smartphones as the competition. But what may have been the biggest shocker was its price. Back then, it was typical to pay three to four hundred dollars for a flagship smartphone, but iPhone started at five hundred dollars, significantly higher than anything else on the market. This caused industry experts to question whether the demand for the device would be strong enough for customers to justify its exorbitant price. Well, customers made their position clear, buying over six million units in just a year. This was due in part to a $200 price cut made just a few months after its release, and this set the stage for the release of the next model in 2008, the iPhone 3G. Despite its popularity, the original iPhone did have some drawbacks. First, it only ran on AT&T's Edge network, which was waning in popularity due to the advent of 3G, a newer network standard that delivered faster speeds. It was also still more expensive than the competition, who were already working to catch up. Finally, the original iPhone was only available in the US, and Apple wanted to bring it to as many international markets as possible. So when iPhone 3G was announced, it not only satisfied those goals with 3G connectivity, a much lower $200 starting price, and availability in 20 countries at launch, but it took things further with a completely new design. Instead of aluminum and plastic, the 3G had a 100% plastic backing. This was due to the antenna system that required a strong connection to cell towers, something that metal like aluminum would inhibit. And for the first time, third-party apps would come to iPhone, but not in the form you might expect. Initially, Apple announced web apps, which were essentially websites optimized for iPhone, so you could simply go to a website to play a mobile game instead of downloading an app. 
but users and developers alike were disappointed since they wanted to build native iPhone apps instead. Despite this, iPhone 3G went on to sell over twice as well as its predecessor at 20 million units in a year. The following year, the 3GS was released, which was the model's first incremental S update. Although it had the same design, it featured improved performance thanks to the faster ARM Cortex processor, which allowed for better app launch times and smoother multitasking. It also had double the RAM of the iPhone 3G, which further improved its performance. The 3GS also featured an improved 3 megapixel camera with autofocus and the ability to record video for the first time. Voice control acted as a primitive version of Siri and allowed users to control certain aspects of the device using voice commands, like making calls, playing music, or setting reminders. Plus, the iPhone 3GS was the first model to feature a digital compass, which improved its ability to provide location-based services. The iPhone 3GS was available in black and white with two storage options, 16GB and 32GB. Despite being an incremental update, it sold faster than any other model, reaching 1 million units in its first weekend. The iPhone 4 was the fourth generation of iPhone, released in 2010. It featured a major design change from the 3GS, with a sleek new glass and stainless steel body. The iPhone 4 also introduced the Retina display, which had a resolution of 960 by 640 pixels at 326 pixels per inch, making it one of the most pixel-dense phone displays on the market at the time. The iPhone 4 was powered by Apple's first custom-made A4 processor and had 512 megabytes of RAM. It was available in two storage options, 16 and 32. Despite the display's increased resolution, its size still measured 3.5 inches, while the competition was moving to larger 4.5 and 5-inch displays. Another major new feature was the introduction of a front-facing camera, which allowed for FaceTime video calling, while the rear camera was upgraded to 5 megapixels, with the ability to record high-definition video. There was also a gyroscopic sensor for improved gaming, and a 3-axis accelerometer for improved motion sensing. And a new noise-canceling microphone improved the clarity of phone calls. Despite its many new features and improvements, iPhone 4 was not without its share of problems. One of the most noticeable was the antenna gate scandal, which involved a design flaw in the phone's antenna system that caused drop calls when the phone was held a certain way. Apple eventually offered free cases to affected customers to remedy the issue. Despite this, iPhone 4 was a huge success, with over 20 million units sold in just three months after its release. The iPhone 4S was another incremental upgrade over the 4, released in 2011. Its upgrades included a new dual-core A5 chip, which provided significant improvements in processing power and graphics, Siri, a voice-controlled personal assistant, which allowed users to perform tasks and access information using natural language commands, and there was a new camera system. The 4S was still only offered in 16 and 32 gigabyte capacities and had the same 3.5 inch retina display. The device's 8 megapixel rear facing camera was a notable upgrade also. It featured a larger sensor, which allowed for better low light performance, and had improved noise reduction, which helped produce clearer, more detailed images. Plus, the camera was able to record 1080p HD for the first time, and the front-facing camera, which was used for video calls and selfies, also received an upgrade, with an improved resolution and faster shutter speeds. The model was well-received, with 4 million units sold in the first three days of its release, making it the most successful iPhone launch to date at the time. That was until the iPhone 5 in 2012, which was perhaps the biggest update since the original. For the first time ever, Apple increased the display size from 3.5 inches to 4, which may not sound like much by today's standards, but it did allow for an extra row of apps on the home screen and more room to display content in a way that wasn't possible before. It was also the first iPhone to run on 4G networks, which delivered 5 to 10 times faster speeds than 3G. Its new A6 processor was faster too, and allowed for quicker app launches, smoother scrolling, and better overall performance. Its camera was also improved, with an 8 megapixel sensor and an f2.4 aperture which delivered better low-light performance. And if all those changes weren't enough, the iPhone 5 also had a completely new design. Anodized aluminum was reintroduced to the back panel, with a strip of glass at the top and bottom for radio signal pass-through. 
It had diamond chamfered edges that aligned seamlessly with the display panel, and for the first time, Apple replaced the 30-pin connector with the lightning port. This new connector was smaller and more durable, but it meant that users would need to purchase new accessories or adapters for compatibility with their new phone. This caused substantial outrage on the internet, with people accusing Apple of changing the port just to sell more power cables and adapters. Despite its larger display and additional features, the iPhone 5 was 18% thinner than the 4 and 20% lighter. It went on to become Apple's best-selling model at that point, achieving 150 million total worldwide sales compared to the iPhone 4S's 72 million. It was a sales success, although there were complaints about the iPhone 5's durability, since its screen appeared to crack more often than previous models, and its aluminum chassis scratched easily, leaving noticeable blemishes. The following 5S took the same design as the 5, but refined a few features, like the new A7 chip, which was the first 64-bit processor used in a smartphone, delivering up to twice the speed as A6, the A7 chip also included a new motion coprocessor called the M7, which was able to track a user's movement, like automatically counting steps throughout the day. Another refined feature of the 5S was its rear camera, which featured a larger 2.2 aperture for even better low-light performance, alongside a new True Tone flash, which added a second warmer LED. That way the iPhone could change the warmth and intensity of the flash depending on the ambient lighting giving flash photography a more natural look. Plus, there was a new slow motion video mode, which allowed users to record videos at 120 frames per second. Although its design was virtually identical to the 5S, it did introduce a new gold color in addition to a new home button with Touch ID. This allowed users to unlock their phone and make purchases with just a touch of their finger. During this same event, Apple introduced a second lower cost iPhone model called the 5C. Instead of a premium aluminum design, it featured plastic that came in five different colors with matching wallpaper. Internally, the 5C was essentially a previous gen iPhone 5 with the same processor, display, storage options, and memory, but one difference was its $100 price, making 5C the lowest cost iPhone Apple ever made. But despite its affordability, the 5C didn't sell as well as Apple had hoped, with an estimated 5 million units in its first quarter, compared to the 5S selling around 31 million units. By 2014, Android phones had grown very large and featured immersive displays, something many iPhone users wanted for themselves. The 4-inch screen on Apple's flagship iPhone was no longer cutting it, so they gave customers what they wanted with iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. The entry model had a 4.7-inch screen, 15% larger than the 5S, while the 6 Plus had a 5.5-inch screen significantly larger than any iPhone before. Their designs were thinner, lighter, and rounder, with a new antenna layout on the back. Not only were their displays larger, but they also featured multiple domain LCD panels, which arranged pixels in a specific pattern to improve viewing angles. Apple's A8 chip powered both models, which featured improved performance and better battery life, giving users up to 14 hours of talk time and 10 days of standby time. The rear-facing camera added the ability to shoot 1080p Full HD video at either 30 or 60 frames per second, and 720p HD slow motion video at either 120 or 240 frames per second. But one change some users didn't like was that the camera protruded from the device instead of being flush like previous models. Near-field communication made its debut on iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, which was initially only used for Apple Pay. A new 128GB storage option was added, while the M8 coprocessor included a barometer to measure altitude change. The 6 and 6 Plus were the first models to be sold by Apple unlocked by default, so their prices didn't include the carrier subsidies of previous models. That meant the 6 started at $649, while the 6 Plus started at $849. Apple ended up selling over 220 million iPhone 6 units and over 56 million 6 Plus units, making this generation of iPhone the most successful up to this point. The following year, Apple again added an incremental S upgrade with the 6S and 6S Plus. They featured an updated A9 chip, which allowed for faster Touch ID recognition and the ability to use Siri hands-free while unplugged from power. 
there was also a new 12 megapixel rear camera lens capable of recording 4K video, a tougher 7000 series aluminum to combat bending issues that went viral with the previous iPhone 6, and something called 3D Touch, which used pressure sensitive technology to detect different levels of pressure on the screen, allowing for new gestures and interactions, like peek and pop to preview content, access menus, and more. The feature required a new hardware layer built into the display panel, and Apple added interactive display tables at their stores to showcase the feature. In addition to the gold color introduced with iPhone 6, the 6S featured rose gold for the first time. Its pricing remained the same as the previous year, and the new models proved to be a sales success, although not quite as many units were sold as the previous generation. At this point, the iPhone was reaching record high prices, with the highest capacity 128GB 6S Plus retailing for $949. This put the flagship iPhone out of many smartphone customers' budget, especially in countries like India and China. So Apple created their most affordable iPhone yet with the SE. It was essentially an iPhone 5S with the new A9 chip available in the same gold and rose gold as the 6S models, and at a retail price of $399, the SE was one of the best value smartphones on the market, despite having a relatively small 4-inch display. Apple never released specific sales numbers, but the model appeared to be very popular, surpassing even Apple's expectations. The 7 and 7 Plus was expected to be a major upgrade the following year, but it was much more incremental than the jump from the 5S to 6. The iPhone 7's design remained largely unchanged, with only a different antenna layout and a new capacitive home button that vibrated when pressed. The feature was enabled by Apple's Taptic Engine, which took up space near the bottom of the device where the headphone jack would be, except Apple removed the jack altogether with iPhone 7 citing the courage it took to abandon an old technology despite customers wishing for the opposite. Many users were upset by this change, since wireless headphones hadn't yet become popular. To help prevent blowback, Apple included a lightning to headphone jack adapter with every iPhone 7, but users were still frustrated that they'd no longer be able to charge the device while listening with headphones. Other changes made to the device were improved water and dust resistance, better battery life, a new 256GB storage option, stereo speakers, a 7 megapixel selfie camera, and a new color option Apple called Jet Black. The 7 Plus received a significant rear camera upgrade with a new telephoto lens, allowing for portrait mode, a photo feature that imitated the bokeh effect of high-end DSLR cameras. Reception to the 7 and 7 Plus were mixed, since removing the headphone jack added inconvenience for users, and the devices themselves weren't a huge leap from the previous generation. Despite this, the 7 became the best-selling iPhone in the world during its first quarter and helped Apple achieve record high revenue. In 2017, there was a lot of confusion with the new generation of iPhones, since Apple broke from tradition in a few different ways. First, everyone was expecting an iPhone 7S but instead, Apple skipped to iPhone 8. And for the first time ever, Apple increased the base prices for all models, with the entry-level iPhone 8 costing $50 more than the 7. Both of these factors led customers to believe that the new device would be radically different, since it was named 8 instead of 7S, and it was priced higher. But iPhone 8 and 8 Plus was the most insignificant upgrade in the product's history. The only changes were a glass back panel instead of aluminum, an A11 chip, the addition of Qi wireless charging, 25% louder speakers, and a portrait lighting feature that allowed users to pick from a handful of lighting effects after taking a portrait mode photo. These changes hardly seemed worth it, and Apple was about to confuse customers even further by revealing a third iPhone model alongside the 8 and 8 Plus. It was called the 10, but instead of using the traditional number 10, they opted for the Roman numeral, which was an X. So this had people calling it the iPhone X, and wondering if it was a new generation compared to the 8, and then wondering if there was ever an iPhone 9. 
It turned out Apple called it the 10 since 2017 was the iPhone's 10 year anniversary. But despite all the confusion, iPhone 10 was the big upgrade people had been looking forward to for years. It had an edge to edge OLED display, a stainless steel design, a new face ID system, no home button, a new gesture navigation system, and the biggest display ever in an iPhone at 5.8 inches iPhone 10 represented a new direction for Apple, and while you may have expected it to receive a warm welcome, it was actually the most criticized iPhone ever. The first issue was its price. It started at $1,000, a number several people laughed at during its reveal, since that was a $350 increase over the iPhone 7 starting price from the previous year. The second problem was the notch, a feature you may not think is odd today, but something countless people were disgusted by back in 2017. In fact, several tech YouTubers refused to buy the iPhone 10 as a boycott against Apple's ridiculous $1,000 asking price and their decision to include an ugly notch. But as it usually happens, this small group of critical voices didn't represent the public at large, who ended up becoming so hyped for the iPhone X, it ended up selling over 60 million units, driving Apple's revenue to record highs and proving that customers were willing to pay a premium for smartphones with more advanced features. With that in mind, Apple introduced the XS and XS Max in 2018, which set a new record high screen size for iPhone with the Max measuring in at a whopping 6.5 inches, although there weren't many other new features. The XS and XS Max had a A12 chip, a 512GB storage option, smart HD photos, depth control which allowed users to change the bokeh effect of portrait photos, and stereo audio recording while capturing videos. The entry-level price of the XS remained the same as the 10, but the new XS Max cost $100 more at $1,100. The lack of significant new features led customers to purchase used iPhone X units, which were more affordable, and the iPhone XR, which was a new, lower cost version of the modern form factor introduced the previous year. The XR cost $749, significantly less than the XS, while still offering a large 6.1 inch edge to edge display, Face ID, and similar camera features. Plus, the color options made the device even more appealing. Although it didn't have premium features like an OLED display, a stainless steel design, dual rear cameras, or depth control, the XR hit the sweet spot for most iPhone customers, and it ended up becoming Apple's best-selling model and the most popular smartphone in the world in 2019. With the success of Apple's three model strategy, they took the same approach in 2019 with the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max. The entry level 11 had a lower price than the XR at $699 and included even more features, like dual rear cameras that included a wide angle lens, significantly improved battery life thanks to the A13 Bionic chip, more memory, and the ability to play spatial audio. It went on to become the most popular model globally for 2019 in less than four months after its launch. The 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max were also a success, with a new XDR display that had improved contrast ratio, an improved camera array that included three lenses, optical image stabilization, multi-camera recording, deep fusion and night mode, plus a new midnight green color option. Its design was changed slightly with a frosted glass back, a centered Apple logo, and a square-shaped camera bump that protruded from the device even further than before. While Apple had been updating their flagship iPhone models, the lower-cost SE continued to see steady sales, so Apple updated the device in 2020 with a completely new design. It was essentially an iPhone 8 with the new A13 Bionic chip. Its price remained $399 and was actually beating out the $1400 Galaxy Ultra in many processing benchmarks, making it an even better value than the original SE. In the fall of 2020, Apple announced a new generation of flagship iPhones that many people didn't expect. First was the iPhone 12 mini, a super small and compact iPhone that featured the same premium features as the standard 12 like the A14 Bionic chip, an aluminum design with flat edges, MagSafe charging, more durable ceramic shield front glass, 5G connectivity, and Dolby Vision video recording. But its price wasn't lower than the previous iPhone 11. It was actually the same, at $699, despite having a smaller display. 
While many people were excited for a small flagship iPhone that could easily be used one-handed, most smartphone customers were used to the large displays of the last several generations, and the 5.4-inch screen on the 12 mini just wasn't appealing. As a result, the mini sales were very disappointing, with Apple dramatically slowing production just two months after its release and later stopping it entirely. The standard iPhone 12 was well received though, despite its $100 price increase over last year's model, while the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max received an improved telephoto lens with 2.5 times optical zoom, the ability to record Apple Pro Raw video, and the addition of a LiDAR scanner that allowed for new augmented reality applications and improved portrait mode photography. But there was one last change that affected all iPhone models being sold by Apple beginning in fall of 2020. The removal of the earpods and power adapter that had always been included with iPhones since the original in 2007. Apple cited environmental concerns as the reason for leaving out the accessories since it would reduce e-waste, but many speculated the primary reason was for cost savings, since including 5G in iPhones was more expensive than Apple had hoped, and they needed to offset the cost. The following year in 2021, many expected the Mini model to be discontinued, but Apple had already prepared its production two years ahead of time, without knowing its sales would be so disappointing. So they continued as planned with the 13 Mini. It had an improved display, an A15 Bionic chip, cinematic mode video recording, one and a half hours of extra battery life, and a new photographic style feature. Despite the improvements, it continued to sell poorly. The iPhone 13 had the same features along with a larger 6.1 inch display, while the 13 Pro and Pro Max received more substantial features, like a 120Hz ProMotion display, which made scrolling through websites and home screen apps much smoother, a new 3x optical zoom, and a macro photo and video mode. With iPhone 14, Apple finally discontinued the Mini, and instead opted for models with a focus on larger displays. The entry-level iPhone 14 was $100 more than the previous year at $799 and featured a 1.6-inch display, emergency SOS via satellite, crash detection, improved low-light photos, and action mode stabilization. The new 14 Plus was $899 and had a 6.7-inch display and the longest battery life ever in an iPhone while the Pro and Pro Max had the same pricing as the previous year and included the most radical change to iPhone's design since the 10. Instead of a smaller notch, Apple introduced the Dynamic Island, similar to the hole-punch bezels found on Android devices, although Apple's version had a secret weapon. The software built around the new island gave it unexpected functionality. It moved like a liquid and could expand, contract, separate, and even show color-coded alerts when the microphone or camera was active. It gave the Pro models an additional level of multitasking that others didn't have. Then there was the always-on display, which allowed users to see the time and notifications without having to wake up the device. These two features were significant upgrades and led many to purchase the 14 Pro or Pro Max over the entry 14 and 14 Plus. Apple even called sales of the 14 and 14 Plus unexpectedly low, and they may end up slowing production of the models sooner than planned. So that is the history of the iPhone up to this point. This is Greg with Apple Explained. Thanks for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next video.